PPDS, um, benzene gas detector, and the S is a silicon detector. Um, their starting temperature range is 250 degrees Celsius, and it goes up to 3,000 degrees Celsius. That's the whole range. So you may have to select a pyrometer from 250 to 1,000 or 1,200C. That's the broad range of all the selections of these pyrometers. Um, they have uh, water cooling jackets, um, stainless steel water cooling jackets. They have, we have air purge, a screw on the front, or the water cooling jacket. Um, it has an integral air purge to it. Um, the units are 4020 milliamp blue powered. <clears throat> or you can get a version that has um, the 44 series, so the DG44 or DS44, and it'll have um, RS485 in case you want a daisy chain, you know, 32 pyrometers, uh, and, and address each one of these pyrometers in a PLC system or something. HMI system. And again, the software is used to connect all the, to adjust all the sensor parameters, temperature range, speed of response, peak picker, Here's the cooling jacket. Uh, these sensors, the DS, the DG40, and 44 series, they offer laser aiming. Uh, and it's a single laser. Or they can have a, a LED, a green LED light inside. And that's used for maybe up to five feet. But that green LED light shows you the exact smudge size of the target measure. Here we have a screw-on type of air purge. And, uh, 95% of the applications, industrial, you want to use at least an air perch. Unless it's, and if it's not hot, you don't need to have a water cooling jacket. But this water cooling jacket um, actually offers the air purge inlet and then also has a water cooling and water out. And we have, a, I had forgotten to get this on the back table there, but there is um, a water cooling jacket that we have on display. Um, about windows, on this particular jacket or the sensor, there is something called a slide window. So this would be, uh, this looks like a lead sulfide window or zinc selenide because it's yellow in color. There's an infrared window. So now you can integrate the window not only within the cooling jacket, um, and it, gets set, it could be put on the cooling jacket and then as threads on the outside here, you could screw on the air purge in front of that, or you could just put it right on the sensor and then screw the air purge on that uh, slide window. The windows slide in and slide out. So if you want to clean it, slide it out, clean it, slide it back in place in front of, uh, in front of the lens of the pyrometer. How is that window replaceable? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, an old ring and um, a retaining ring. Unscrew it to the retaining ring and take it out. So this offers that uh, slide window assembly. Slide window stuff. Um, in many dirty environments, even steel industries, they'll use it because of the inherently what happens is people shut off the air perch. Um, it happens no matter where you go, and then the lens gets dirty. So here, at least you can shut off the air perch, the window gets dirty, and you can clean the window. If they get scratched and so forth, then you can affect the uh, temperature measurement reading. So the windows really the scratches on the windows it really doesn't affect. Unless it's really big scratches, it affects the field of view, but generally doesn't affect the measure. And when you put the window in, it drops the emissivity. So depending on what window, um, the quartz window will drop 10 or 12 percent. So if I'm looking at a product that's 100 percent emissivity and a black body source, and I put that window in front, it's going to go to uh, it's going to drop the temperature. And I'll have to put the emissivity to 0.88 or 0.90 to a drop for the 10 to 12 percent loss of energy that comes through the window. That's a constant, though. That don't change. Once you put that window in, it's a one-time setting of emissivity, and that's it. So each window does have different emissivities based on their thickness. Um, but generally speaking, here we're using three millimeters, and you don't really we're not we're not going up. You know, three-inch thickness, like corning glass or something of that nature, that we have to look through. But um, uh, each window, as in quartz, sapphire, calcium fluoride, zinc selenide, zinc lead sulfide, they'll have different transmission levels, and you have to adjust the emissivity to compensate for that. Here we have the fixed focus optics graph. So, if you were to look at uh, one of these 40 series, 
you'll have uh, optics one, uh, excuse me, optics five, four, uh, seven, six, seven, and eight. Five, six, seven, and eight. And here you can see the scale of view patterns. Uh, the highlighted and bold font. Uh, so here you can see at 100 millimeters, which is uh, four inches, two millimeters. <coughs> And uh, so that's 80 thousandths of an inch. And you can see as it blows out here, it gets larger. As a matter of fact, uh, let me check this out. On the next one here, it's 300 millimeters, so 12 inches. We have a, uh, a 6 millimeter spot size, 6. And uh, so it's linear from the, the lens optics to the focal point, And beyond that, it blows out. So it goes down linear, and it blows out faster beyond that focal point. So you need to make sure that your spot size is larger than the minimum um, diameter focal point that we provide. So you need to specify these types of optics. You could just plug it into the back of the sensor and then uh, on the display you could uh, set all the parameter settings. That's brand new, the 40 series? Yes. The field of views generally uh, for the um, low temperature versions, 8 to 14 microns, are about uh, 50 to 1, 50 inches for one inch target. The higher temperature versions are 100 to 1 or greater in terms of the distance to spot size ratio.